Hiya. This isn't going to be a Slim and Well recipe. This is going to be a rhubarb crumble. And it's a rhubarb crumble for my dad, my pops. <laughs> so, he's not on Slimming World. He's not going to be on Slimming World. <laughs> he has no intention of being on Slimming World, my dad. <laughs> anyway, my dad, he loves a bit of crumble. So, he's not been very well, bless him. He's not very well. And, unfortunately for all of us, he's not going to get any better. Um, so, it's a case of making him stuff, being with him, and um, being a family, and doing the best we can for each other, and because we love each other, you know? And he loves a bit of crumble, so he's going to get a bit of bloody crumble. <laughs> His daughter's going to make him a nice crumble. Anyway, a really generous man, or lady, I have no idea, down the road, from where I live, left out for everybody to help themselves a box of rhubarb yesterday and I got some for my dad and that's what I'm going to use to make him some rhubarb crumble. So, what have I done? I have chopped up my rhubarb and I've washed it thoroughly because I don't know if this man or lady's got a dog. <laughs> I don't know if it's cocked its leg up on it or where it's been. So it's had a thorough good washing. <laughs> so I've chopped it all up and I put it in there and given it a good wash, used a big knife and I'm going to get my pan, now I've got quite a lot, so, God, excuse me. Lordy, right, so, got my big pan, I'm going to transfer all my rhubarb into my big pan going to put a dash of water, that's it, you don't need a lot, you don't want a lot of water because a lot of liquid will come out of that rhubarb and I'm going to use brown sugar for this to sweeten, where are we, Let's get some brown sugar, so I'm just going to sprinkle on some brown sugar, now I know my dad likes it quite tart, so I think that'll do. That's a dessert spoon that I use. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my dad. He was 74 in February. And um, he won't mind me telling you how old he is. You get to that certain age, don't you? And you tell everyone how old you are. <laughs> anyway, um, I've known my dad all my life, obviously. And he's a really good man. He is a really good man, my dad. Everyone says that about their dads, don't they? But my dad is. Um, he was a scout cub leader when I was little. And when I was about eight, he was a scout cub leader. And my mum was a brownie pack leader. And um, I didn't like the brownies. <laughs> I had to go to brownies and I hated it. It's not like now where girls and boys can, you know, girls can join the brownie, the cubs and stuff. So I used to go to the cubs because my dad was the um, the, <laughs> the leader, <laughs> so I could go. Oh, I used to love it. We used to go um, camping and all sorts, you know. I remember one camping trip. We used to have this Jack Russell called Oscar, Ozzy. Anyway, I took the dog for a walk. We're in the middle of nowhere in these woods camping. And off I go, and he says to me, last thing my dad said to me was, don't let the dog off the lead. No, I won't, my dad, I won't. No, I won't. I promise I won't. Two minutes up the road, I let the ruddy dog off the lead. Anyway, he goes down a rabbit hole. Couldn't get the dog out of this rabbit hole. He'd gone down so deep, he'd, um, <laughs> he'd cut himself stuck between roots underneath, in the ground of the trees. Anyway, I called him, I called him, I called him, he won't come out and he won't come out. Anyway, I had to go back and tell my dad that, you know, I'd let the dog off the lead and he'd got in a rabbit hole. And he was so good, bless him, he didn't tell me off or anything, you know. He just got a couple of his guys and they got some spades and they came back up and they started digging. And they dug and they dug and they dug. 
got to the point where we thought we we're going to have to get the fire brigade to get this ruddy dog out. We could hear him whimpering. I was crying. Oh, anyway, about two hours later, they dug nine foot down and they finally, the bloke said, I've got him, I've got him. Anyway, managed to cut the the roots that he was stuck because he'd been pulling and pulling and pulling and got himself right stuck between here in the roots and um, they managed to sort of break the roots and get him out and covered in fleas and ticks and all I was never allowed to take the dog for a walk after that <laughs> I was never allowed to be trusted with the dog <laughs> yeah so poor old Ozzy <laughs> stuck in the dark <laughs> in, well it's his own fault he shouldn't have gone down there so and so so yeah so anyway, my dad was a, a scout leader, cub cat leader for years, and then um, he was um, honoured with being a district commissioner of cubs, of the cub pack, and um, he did that for quite a few years. And then my parents retired, um, they were both civil servants, so they both retired, and um, they've done a lot of things since retiring, they've, um, they've volunteered at the local hospital um, as volunteers and they volunteered at the National Trust. My mum was one of those people that stands in the room and frightens you to death and suddenly starts talking, <laughs> tells you all about the history of the place. And my dad used to um, ferry around um, the, the, um, the people on the little scooter thing, you know, um, if you're a bit hard of walking or whatever, you know, and you'd wanted a little lift. He'll give you a little lift and have a little crack of a joke with all the, the old ladies. And um, so they did that. And they've been on cruises and they've had a merry old time, you know. Um, the village they live in at the moment, um, they, um, well they were, they're not at the moment because my dad's, my dad's too poorly. Um, but they were helping out at the church. Um, Mum would go and help clean, she was on like a rotor. And she'd go and help clean the church, dust the pews and that sort of thing and sort the flowers out. Um, my dad would go over and he would, he would um, help water the guard, you know, the, the grounds and that to make in the summertime if it was getting a bit parched. So yeah, there was an old boy that used to live across the road, love him, dear old boy, in his 90s. Um, my dad used to drive his car and take him out, you know, once a week and they'd go off um, to the seaside, just the two of them off to the seaside and they'd take him wherever he wanted to go you know just to and sit with him and just talk with him and dear old boy he was yeah yeah so my parents I feel have done they're good people you know and they've done quite a lot for the community they've done their bit bless them so yeah so I've got a brother my brother's five years older than me and um between me and my brother, we've given them, a, you know, a couple of grandchildren that they spoil absolutely rotten. <laughs> so, yeah, so, anyway, so, unfortunately, like I said, he's, he's, he's not well. I mean, he's not been well all my life, love him. I mean, from the age of 30, he had um, arthritis. Um, but it didn't stop him, you know, from doing stuff. He's had numerous hip replacements, knee replacements. Um, recently he had a whole knee and hip and thigh replacement up in Bristol. He's had a quadruple heart bypass. He's like the bloody bionic man, honestly, he really is. <laughs> there ain't a part of him that had <laughs> been seen to, really, by blooming a physician. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, love him. Um, but this time, um... Unfortunately, there's not a lot anyone can do. So, yeah, it is what it is. So anyway, on a happier note, he's going to feed his face with my crumble, <laughs> whether he likes it or not. <laughs> so, I've got to make my crumble topping. So, one my rhubarb. I don't want to overcook my rhubarb for too long. I just, you just want it to be. A little bit sort of al dente when you put your knife in I would say so when you pop your knife in it just wants to feel yeah we're not there yet nearly because when you put your topping on and then oh god can't get my knife in no put your topping on and then put it in the oven you don't want it all to disintegrate into just like mush and slop underneath your 
your nice crumble topping. So, I'm going to get out some ingredients and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, just walk the dog. <laughs> I just thought it's getting a bit late and it looks like it's going to blow in rain. So, I've just walk the dog. So, I've just run her around. So, my rhubarb is all ready. I've got some butternut squash sat down here as well. I've just had that in the oven. I'm going to do a, um, a feta cheese and butternut squash frittata. Don't know if it'll be alright, but I'll try it. Give it a go. So, I'm going to do most of this by eye, the crumble topping. So, I've got some flour and I've got some oats. Doesn't matter what flour you use, I don't find. I just use whatever I've got. And I've got some pumpkin seeds. And I've got some cinnamon, and I've got some margarine stuff. Oh, and brown sugar again. So, what I'm going to do is get my cup out of here, if I can. And I'm going to put my flour in first. So I'm going to put in one, probably, so I've got quite a lot of rhubarb, two cups of flour, one cup of oats, one half cup of oats. <laughs> seeds just a sprinkle in some cinnamon to, to, to you know to taste some sugar well, So it's five dessert spoons of sugar, brown sugar. And I'll put the butter in. Hang on. Hi. So I've just put in 170 grams of margarine and I've cubed it up and I'm just going to put it through the flour and everything and the sugar and everything I've got in here and just rub it with your fingers, with the tips of your fingers until it resembles breadcrumbs. It's a little bit hard this, I should have left it out of the fridge a bit longer. Um, but I'll work with it and I'll come back to you in a minute and show you what it looks like. Right, so I've put my rhubarb into my dishes. So I've managed to get that much. And the juice that was in the bottom, I put, I've divided that between the three as well. I have put a little bit more brown sugar in my crumble mix and these dark bits that you can see that's the sunflower seeds that I put in there it was what's sunflower seeds no pumpkin seeds sorry pumpkin seeds right so I'm just going to now pull that over the top oh, let's get my oven on 200 I'm just going to move this because I can see what's going to happen. I'm going to get all down the side of the blooming cooker. I quite like a thick crumble when I do a crumble. So, you know, be quite generous. That's the best bit to crumble. And there we go. You won't be able to find the blooming rhubarb in that bit. <laughs> <laughs> right, so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a spoon. I've got one somewhere. What have I done with that? <sighs> Where's that one? Lost it. And I'm just going to sprinkle some brown sugar on top. So, 
And then all I'm going to do is get some butter, margarine. And I'm just going to cut it into quite small pieces. And then I'm just going to put a few little bits on top. And there we have it. That will go in the oven for about 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. I'll have a check after 20 minutes and see how it's doing. I'm going to sit them on some trays because I always find it easier to get it in and out the oven if it's on a tray. So there's two going in. Ah, the big one. them in 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Ooh, they're out. They've been 20 minutes. This is why you put them on a tray. I've had a bit of an explosion, can you see, around the tray. You wouldn't want to clean that up out of your oven floor, base, bottom, <laughs> whatever it's called. Anyway, they are ready. So you know when they're ready, when they're especially when they're like these little ones, they're sort of oozy and the juice is coming out um, around the sides like that. Um, this is quite thick, this one, but it was bubbling around the corner in this corner here as well. So that's pretty much when you know they're ready. And the topping's nice and brown as well. So this is way too hot for me to try. I'm not even going to attempt to try to, <laughs> to taste test this because it is just going to burn my mouth to pieces. Um, so you can you can take my word for it that it will taste nice. So there's the rhubarb crumble. That's my dad's rhubarb crumble. Hope you enjoy it, Dad. Um, I'll bring it round tomorrow for you. <laughs> you can't have it tonight. Tomorrow night. <laughs> anyway. There we go. Hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. It's not a Slimming World tutorial. It's a dedication uh, video of a crumble to my dad. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Bye then. <laughs>